morning everybody welcome to my channel and these gorgeous images you see in front of me are from my friend Kimmy at Salty Beach Scrappers. I'll put a link to her Etsy shop in the description box below but these are part of her wickedly beautiful Halloween collection and just love 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 the this whole collection. I love everything about it. The colors, the unique images and Oh my gosh, you guys have to get your hands on this. It's absolutely fabulous. So I have here printed out one of the journaling cards that I printed out at a 5x7. And then I have this um, beautiful um, page here in an 8x8. And so I did create a photo album. And I did... <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? I am so happy with this. But I did print out all the images except for one um, in an 8x8 format. And at the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit about how I printed my papers and, um, and the types of paper and ink that I used, okay? So anyways, but um, I'd like to mention now that if you... Um, would like to follow me on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe. And I'd love to have you join me for my upcoming videos. And also, if you like um, content like this, then please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of, of this type of thing. Um, and also, um, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up. So anyways, so this album is 5 by 7 I've created it using a floating hinge. I do have a basic album tutorial for that. So if you go to my tutorial playlist, you'll see that. Um, so I will, I will mention at the end of the video also the dimensions on the album so you can recreate this um, if you would like and follow along with my tutorial on how to put the pages together and create the spine. And then also I'll go over a little bit about the sourcing of the materials that I've used in this album. So on the cover here, I've chosen the beautiful black cat papers and I did fussy cut this image here and mount it onto some thin chipboard just to give it a little bit of a pop. And I just love that image. It's so cute that it's little kitties next to the love potion bottle. So fun. And then the books say Devils and Demons and Autumn Blooms. <laughs> so very cute. I have this fun flower collage here on the corner. And these little flowers here are from the ephemera sheet of the collection. And then I just added one of the eyeballs to the center of this flower here. And then I did add some glossy accents to the eyeballs as well as this moth here on the side. I have my little um, moon charm here with a little purple lavender crystal in the center. And then I also have this little star charm on the spine here. And then I made this tassel to go with this album. I love how this came out. Oh my gosh, so cute. So I've just used ribbons and trims from my stash, and um, I'm not sure where, I can't remember where I've had these beads in my stash for a while, and I, I take things out of the packaging because it's just easier to store, it takes up less room, but I'm thinking I got them at Michael's, I want to say. Um, it could have been Joanne's, um, um, but I'm thinking that's where I got these um, skull and crossbone beads. And then... Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I just made this little tassel here. I thought that was so fun for the spine, and I just love how that turned out. And it goes so well with this album. I've also added some lace onto my spine, and I do uh, teach you how to, um, like I said, make the uh, create the spine in the album in my tutorial. Um, but if you do have any questions on how to uh, make this album, make sure that you leave those in the comments and I'll answer them the best I can. 
So I wanted this to be kind of shabby, so I distressed all the papers with my scissors and just kind of made it a little shabby looking and just added, you know, trims here and there and and I just love the way this came out. I think it came out so so pretty. And I love these colors, such a non-traditional colors for Halloween. These pinks and purples and blues. It's so pretty. Um so so pretty. So I have a side pocket here and I've just distressed this eyelash trim to make it very shabby and place it on the side here. And but I want you to see the detail in this image here. Look at the highlights in her hair. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my gosh, so many little details on the images and just so absolutely beautiful. I've added this rose here to her hat. I thought that was really pretty. And um, some um, blinged trim that I have in my little um, fabric trim stash. And I made some little shaker cards here with the journaling cards. There's six on a sheet and you can um, size them to any size that you need. Um, so that's really versatile there, but I just kept these the size that came with the 8x8 sheet and um, made little shakers with them using the little clear um, plastic, one of those clear plastic sheets, pocket sheets. And um, then I added these little confetti pieces with the skull and crossbones there. And then this one has the um, little silver half moons. And so I think those came out really super cute. And of course there's room to, to tuck a couple pictures in this pocket as well. And then this is from the ephemera sheet and I just did some glossy accents on that added a little antenna and I think that came out so cute. I love this paper. I love the moons uh, with the flowers. So pretty. And then here I have another one of those journaling cards and I just glued it onto the three sides here to make a, let me get my little tag here, my little tuck spot so you can add photos in here. And um, then also I made this tag from the ephemera sheet. I just edited it and cropped it to make it bigger and then printed it out um, and attached it to some cardstock to give it a more sturdy. Um, I have to do that because um, the paper that I like to use is, is not super heavy. It's uh, maybe 27 pound, maybe 30 pound paper. Um, so it's it's great for junk journals, but for albums I need to, um, you know, bulk it up a little bit, make it a little bit more sturdy. So um, I the cardstock that I've used is from Country Craft Creations. It's their um, artisan cardstock in the antique gray, I think it's called. It's the lighter gray. There's three grays. It's the lightest one. And uh, anyway. That's usually my the paper that I use when I'm making my albums. Another flower collage here as well on the side, and then these these cute little blinged up trims um, that I got on Etsy. And then I made a little ruffle here that I had hand sewed, and then um, made a little tuck spot here with this image, and added one of the moths from the ephemera here and here. Made a little pocket, added some netting, added some ribbon here to make it sturdy on the top. And then I do have a couple pieces of paper from a Michaels paper, six by six paper pad. I think it was, it was called Moon something. I can't remember the name of it, but I got it quite a long time ago. I've had it in my stash for a while. So, um, anyways, the, um, I just, I ran out of photo paper actually is what happened. And so I needed to supplement with <laughs> some paper for my stash. So that's what I did. So I made this little tag here just for interest. And it could also be used as a journaling spot, you know, um, 
can attach some paper to the back here for some journaling or whatnot, or even add some little tiny wallet photos or something. Okay, this charm wants to keep going up backwards, and so it's really bugging me. And I don't know why, because I put it on when I put it first put it on there, it was coming out right. What do I mean if I do that? There we go. And then this is a Prima flower that I had in my stash, and I just added the eyeball to the center. I think I got it the flowers at Hobby Lobby. And I made a little collage here with a piece of the ephemera and some trims and added the little flower to his hat. Um, and then I've got some eyelash trim on the side here. But I love this paper with the, the skull and crossbones with the top hat. It has such a kind of a voodoo look, I guess. I don't know. Really cute. And then... This image here is the only one that I printed out 5x7. Um, I just needed to squeeze that haunted house into there. So I did lose the full moon on the edges in the tree, but um, I just really wanted to get that haunted house in there. So, And then this just opens up for more of the same, the same image there. And I'm starting to get the sunlight. It's morning. I'm starting to get the sunlight from coming through the window. Um, so I have a belly band here. And again, this is one of those um, pieces from that paper from Michael's. Um, the other piece that I used was on the back of one of these. Not that one. I just used this um, skull paper on the back of that shaker card. And that was it. That was all I used. And um, so anyway, I made this little belly band here, added this beautiful purple flower, and then um, which I've been hoarding, by the way. And then um, these beautiful trims and the cheesecloth. I think I got it Joanne's a couple years ago. This gray cheesecloth. And then I added some more. Um, of that eyelash trim here with another little charm tied on to the center. And I love this, this paper here. I think this is so pretty with the soft muted purpley gray colors and the white moths and oh, so pretty. Love this witch here. She's so pretty. And um, so that's one of my favorite papers in this collection. But I love them all. They're all so pretty. And anyway, so that is my my shabby, non-traditional Halloween album with the images from my friend Kimmy at Salty Beach Scrapper. So please make sure you check out her Etsy shop. She's got some fabulous digital images, and it's Halloween 2021, and I think this might even be on sale right now. And I don't know how long she's going to be keeping her images in her shop. So you might want to um, hurry and check that out and um, get a hold of them while you can, right? So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And again, um, if you want to know a little bit more about how I printed out my papers and whatnot, then um, please keep watching. Um, so I'm going to briefly tell you uh, the settings that I use to print my papers. Um, for a more detailed explanation of how I print my papers and all the little ins and outs that I've discovered in printing papers, and I'm just going to show you this. There's so much differences in what you can do in printing the papers. Um, I'm going to end up making another video just for that because I, as I started, I realized it was taking way too long. I didn't want this video to be that long and bore you guys, for those of you who really don't care. Um, and so um, I'm just going to tell you what settings I used and what size I used. And then if you want more information, um, be looking for a video to follow. It probably will be a week or two from now. Um, so if you subscribe then you'll and hit that notification bell, you'll be notified of that video. So I printed out all my papers, 8 by 10 with the uh, including the journaling sheet, journaling card sheet, and the um, ephemera sheet which you can see here, I printed this 8x10, or 8x8, and um, ex with the exception of this one here, which I think I already mentioned, and I printed this one out 5x7. It kind of scrunches the image down and cuts off the edges a bit, but um, I really just wanted that haunted house in there. 
Um, so that's the size I used on the printer settings. I did high quality setting. It uses a lot more ink, but um, I just really wanted these vivid colors. And then on the paper type setting, um, I'm using a premium presentation paper. And the keyword there is presentation paper because there's also premium papers that are not presentation papers. This one. And you can see the difference. So, um, so on my paper settings, I clicked the high resolution paper because that was the closest thing that I could think of that matched what I was using. And so those are the settings on my printer. And um, for more information on how I size my papers or how I get the 8x8 size and um, more information on how the inks come out on different papers and so on and so forth, um, be watching for my next video. Keep going. So this um, album with the floating hinge I've made a gazillion times before. I do have a tutorial which I'll put a link in the description box. Um, so the sizes that you're going to need are um, you're going to cut out 12 sheets of cardstock at 5x7. I use six of them to make the album with the hinges. The hinges are one and a quarter inches by seven inches, and you're going to score at a half an inch on each side. As you follow the tutorial, you'll see how I've done that and how I put the pages and the hinges together. So I'm just giving you the sizes here. Um, also, the once the album was put together, the spine turned out to be one and a quarter inches. So I did cut a one and a quarter by seven inch piece of paper to put to cover the hinges inside there. And then the spine was a leftover piece of paper um, from cutting the pages. So it was three inches by seven. So I cut my seven inches across the paper first and then I cut at five and that left me that three by seven paper that I used on the spine. And so I used the same paper that I have on the covers and um, then I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I, um, I cut a piece of cardstock that was also three by seven and I scored every eighth of an inch on that paper and you'll see uh, me doing that in my tutorial and then I attached the design paper to the cardstock that was scored and then I just wrapped it around the album and you just glue the sides down. So you want to make sure that you have your one and a quarter inch all the way across. You don't want to you don't want to make sure that you're not because the album wants to tend to curl up in the back like this, you know, when you don't have the spine on, it tends to go like this when it's setting. So you need to make sure that your spine goes all the way across and then you glue those edges onto the cover of your book. So, um, so you're going to imagine that this is totally undecorated and you're gluing that, um, your decorated spine onto your, onto your covers of your album. Okay. And then once that paper was glued onto the covers and of course you're not gluing the spine that needs to be, that's why it's called a floating hinge because that's not attached. So you don't want to glue anything in the center, just on the sides there. And, um, please watch the video for more information on that. And then, um, then once my album was put together, then I um, added a piece of that, you know, those six extra pieces of cardstock that I told you to cut. Then I added them to the right sides of the pages just to strengthen the pages and make them a little more sturdy. And uh, except for the covers, I added those on the other side. So, so only glue the four pages here on the right, the extra papers on the right. And then um, on this one here, 
I cut a piece of cardstock that was five and a half by seven. Sorry, I'm gonna have to see if I can't block that sun coming in. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I was saying five and a half by seven, then you score at a half an inch, and then I just glued that tab onto the page um, before I added my design paper. And also on adding your design papers, um, what I did is I um, distressed the edges that went along the score lines first, so that on this page it would be on both sides. Um, this one it would just be here and here and then I attached my design papers to the pages and then once that was done I made sure I then that way I could just distress everything all at once instead of doing each individual piece at a time that would have taken forever just make sure that you're also distressing this on the side before you put it on the fold you don't want to distress that fold there you don't want that that hinge to rip off so make sure you don't distress that edge once your fold out is in place. And then here is just a one by seven inch piece of cardstock that I've added design paper to um, to make the belly band. I just I glued it here and here. And then the pocket is a three by seven piece of cardstock that I added the image to, which is the same size. And then I just glued it in the three places here. So that's how I've constructed the album. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer. Um, if you have any questions on my tutorial, um, feel free to, to ask me as well. I did make the tutorial uh, kind of when I was first starting, and um, it's pretty rough. Uh, I went back and watched it the other day, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, i got to make another tutorial. So please bear with me. Keep in mind I was starting out, and um, if you do have any questions, please ask me, and I'll help you. Um, design your album. Um, so I think that covers the construction of the album. Um, as far as the sourcing for the materials, uh, I got the charms off of Amazon. Uh, the roses I got at Michael's. Um, I don't know if they have them anymore. I know that they're starting to phase out a lot of the scrapbooking items. It's kind of uh, depressing to me, but um, Anyway, uh, this flower here is from Petaloo, which is no longer in existence, but I did um, any any kind of a, a purple flower would work, and I just took the stamens out, um, glued the, I had to glue the, the flower back together once I did that, and then um, this is just an eyeball from the ephemera. And then, um, and then these are, um, I think I mentioned before, these are cut out from the ephemera. Um, the pieces that I did, the glossy accent, I glossy accented them first and then cut them out. Um, that, I think that's just easier that way. Um, I did mount the paper onto the cardstock, like I said, on that too, just to give them a more sturdy feel. Um, I did ink around the edges on this piece here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that already, um, just to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, and like I said, I, I fussy cut that out of the thin chipboard. Um, mounting the image onto the thin chipboard. Um, the tassel, I've just used trims from my stash, but I get a lot of my, okay, I'm giving away one of my secrets here. I get a lot of my trims from Fish Bay Elements. She has the most gorgeous trim packages. Um, so a lot of this um, trim that you see here, this ladder trim and um, whatnot, I've gotten from Fish Bay Elements. The cheesecloth, I think I got at Joann's a couple years ago. Um, I do get some of my supplies, believe it or not, at the Spirit Halloween stores. Um, and uh, these um, skull and crossbones, I believe I got at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, so that was actually a bead set that I got. And then, um, so... Uh, anyway, I just, uh, don't forget, um, to poke your hole in your spine before you put your, put your spine on, but I just poked a hole about a quarter inch down and just have attached everything with this ribbon here. And, um, there's a jump ring on the, on the top of the tassel that's holding the star and the, the tassel onto that ribbon. 
So um, some of my trims I get from Sheila at Boho Daydreams. Um, the sari ribbon here, the sari silk ribbon, and um, these um, beautiful um, remnants or little scraps of trim I get from Sheila at Boho Daydreams. And she sells them in packages. Uh, a lot of times they're color themed. And uh, so you can check her out on Facebook. She does have a YouTube channel as well. So um, anyway, she has some gorgeous, gorgeous trims. And um, this is just eyelash trim. I think I already mentioned that, that I, I shabbied that up. Um, and let's see. I think I've mentioned everything else. So if you do have any questions about anything, please let me know. Um, I think I've, I've telling you all my sources for all the items. So anyway, um, I hope you have enjoyed this um, project and this video and um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think about uh, something like this with non-traditional Halloween. Um, would you like to see more um, shabby albums from me or, um, you know, if you've watched my Halloween uh, playlist, um, let me know what kind of projects you enjoy seeing for Halloween. Uh, I would really like your feedback. So anyway, you guys have a happy Halloween. Thanks for watching. And uh, thank you so much, Kimmy, for um, creating such beautiful images. Um, I really love it. So catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.